Good evening. A man who lost both his arms and legs to a deadly infection three years ago says his life is now better than ever. We followed Alex Lewis through some terrible times, but now he's determined to walk again in the new year. Kerry Swain has his story. So this is more um, for your core, but it also makes you work every muscle in your body, apparently. Alex Lewis may have lost all four limbs, but none of his strength of character or sense of humour. You've turned a beer gut into a six pack? No, the beer guts, well, it's not beer really, it's more chocolate and white wine at the moment. Alex was given only a 3% chance of survival after what he thought was a common cold and sore throat was diagnosed as strep A toxic shock syndrome, septicemia and necrotizing fasciitis. Three years after having both arms and legs amputated, out on a specially adapted bike, he's not only alive, but really living. You get down days, but we all get down days. You know, we're all humans after all. And at no point do I think, oh God, that's enough's enough. Because we just, everything is much easier than it was, uh, you know, eating dinner two and a half years ago was hellish. But I'm going to eat my dinner in a couple of hours' time as if it's just normal. And watching you drag yourself literally into the gym, what gives you the discipline and, and the motive to get on and do that? I'm not going to change being a quadruple amputee. This is me for the rest of my life now. And I fear that as I get older, to lose that fitness and not be able to play Lego on the floor or, you know, do things like that, it, it worries me massively. So that gives me the impetus to get in there and, and train as, as hard as I can. But terrible pain means Alex is going back into hospital. I suffer from a lot of nerve pain because I'm missing all four limbs um, and my nerves are still firing as if I've got hands, feet. Uh, it's constant and I've got no way of controlling it. I'm going to have my sciatic nerves uh, cauterised, I think, in both of my legs. A few weeks after the operation, I return. The surgery has not been entirely successful. It hasn't worked as yet, but it could be next week, it could be six months down the line. So fingers crossed that we get there. How disheartening is that, that you have to fight so hard every time? Something like that is not a big thing to endure, really, in comparison to what we've gone through um, at the beginning. Alex also had another operation on his lips, which have been reconstructed using flesh from his shoulder. Next year is the start of um, the finishing process on my, on my mouth. So we begin facial tattooing in the middle of January, where they'll colour it up and then hopefully all my skin will merge uh, into one and I'll have a, a kind of face back in a way. So what everybody wants to know is when will you be walking? When will you get these super legs? I think realistically we're looking at the middle of next year at the moment. It's more to it than just, you know, you're not buying something off the shelf, so you have to order it. You've then got to purchase the knee, uh, the ankle joint to work with the knee joint. You've then got to purchase the foot. Those legs not available on the NHS will cost a quarter of a million pounds. Then Alex needs new arms. Fundraising for prosthetics will be a lifelong challenge. Do you never get disheartened? No, not now. Not now. I think I'm so lucky, so, so lucky with what I've got around me and who I've got and how everything has panned out that I've got nothing to be disheartened about. Alex is working again as an interior designer, looking forward, like the rest of us, to a peaceful Christmas at home with the people he loves. Kerry Swain, ITV News. He is just incredible and such an inspiration. And if you want more information about the Alex Lewis Trust, just head to our website. In other news tonight, a murder investigation has been launched after a woman who was attacked in Bournemouth earlier this month has died. 25-year-old Hayley Wall was found outside a supermarket in Charminster Road on December the 13th. She was taken to hospital with serious head injuries. A man's been charged and is due to appear in court next month. A body found on a beach in Dorset has been identified as that of a missing pensioner. Albert Ault, who was 84, went missing from his home in Bournemouth on Sunday. His body was found on Boscombe Beach yesterday. His death is not being treated as suspicious. 
A man wearing a Santa hat has robbed a shop near Brighton at Knife Point. It happened at the co-op in Saltdean on Tuesday night. He stole more than £2,000 from a safe. Police say it might be linked to a similar robbery in Brighton last week. Now, more than £85,000 has been raised for a singer from Southampton who's being diagnosed with cancer. The lead singer of The Delays, Greg Gilbert, has stage 4 bowel and lung cancer. Surgery is not an option and NHS drugs won't work. So now his family are trying to raise enough money for alternative treatment. Emma Wilkinson has been to meet him. Squash. Greg Gilbert is trying to make things feel normal for his little girls, but they're far from it. He was recently diagnosed with stage 4 bowel cancer that has spread to his lungs and there's little the NHS can do. You find yourself saying, oh, well, how long have I got? You know, and then that, that's now like the defining moment in my life up to this point, apart from the birth of my kids. But at the same time, nothing has made me more keenly aware of living in the moment. In a weird way, you know, I'm more present than I might have ever have been. To his family, Greg is a loving father and fiancé. To many others, he is the front man of delays. Over 15 years, the band has built up a loyal following. Now many of those touched by their music have thrown their support behind Greg. Genetic tests have shown that the only free immunotherapy drug available wouldn't work for him, and surgery isn't an option. So his family are trying to raise £100,000 for alternative new treatments not offered on the NHS. The NHS has to make some difficult decisions about what treatments to provide, so the NHS will only recommend a treatment if there's good, robust clinical data that it is likely to benefit patients. Greg's fiancée, Stacey, says the care they've received from the NHS has been fantastic, but for her, no price is too high. That's probably the hardest part of this whole situation for me, is thinking about a number for, for Greg's life because there isn't one. So I was willing to do anything to make sure that he could at least have a chance at this treatment. A glimmer of light in this dark time has been the generosity of strangers. More than £75,000 has been raised in just four days. Alongside of the darkest, you know, sadness I've ever known, um, is this electricity. I've never experienced so much sort of love and my family and me, you know, the gratitude, I don't, can't put into words. Emma Wilkinson, ITV News, Southampton. And finally tonight, a choir of people who used to be homeless put on a special Christmas performance in Brighton this week. It comes as new figures show the city's homeless population has almost doubled in the past year. Today, the government announced a new grant of over £1 million, but campaigners say it's just not enough. However you found yourself on the streets, maybe a family break up, you lose your job, alcohol, drugs, trying to return back to society. Very few people know how hard and what a struggle it is. Often getting the keys to a house isn't the end of somebody's homelessness journey. It's, it's, it's quite often just the start. We're in the middle of a housing crisis. There's a real pressure on, on our services, but it also has been a more accurate reflection. And that's really important because we need to know where the rough sleepers are, even in the, tucked away in the most remote corners, because then we can start to work with them and get them into services. Now, what does the weather have in store with the details? Here's Simon. From sleet to the slopes, driving through Europe, Euro Tunnel the Shuttle sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. Good evening, and if you enjoyed the very calm weather we had today, tomorrow will be, well, a little bit more unsettled with some very strong winds developing as the day goes on and some rain arriving in time for the evening. Basically, we've got a deep area of low pressure. Storm Barbara bringing much stronger winds north of the country, but for us, gusts of around 40, 50 miles an hour. Then we get a quiet day for Christmas Eve. Then Christmas Day turns a bit noisy again with another front bringing with it some cloud, some strong breezes and also bits and pieces of drizzle 
for tonight though it's quiet it's calm you might if you're unlucky catch an odd shower just sneaking in off the sea clip in the south coast but for most of us it's going to stay dry quite cool though temperatures down to around two or three degrees but an increasingly strong wind and for tomorrow if you wake up to a bit of brightness fairly quickly the clouds going to thicken up and that wind will get even stronger like i say come the afternoon gusts of 40 to 50 miles an hour quite likely along the coast and around the isle of wight temperatures tomorrow though 11 12 degrees 54 in fahrenheit but you won't notice how mild it is well because of the strength of that wind and then tomorrow evening the rain pushes through some heavy bursts as well but it should have cleared by around 9 10 o'clock euro tunnel the shuttle sponsors itv meridian weather and that is all for us for tonight we are back in good morning britain at six from me and from all the team good night